Hey everyone, John Pru here with today's quick tip on a great scale to use over minor tunes. It's the Phrygian dominant scale. So this is a scale that's used in many cultures and has a worldly recognizable appeal. I'm going to teach you the scale today, but I'm also going to show you three techniques on how to improvise using this scale over a common jazz chord progression. You ready to learn? Let's go! When you hear the term Phrygian dominant, what does that mean? Well, let's figure it out together. All right, we're going to talk about how to construct this scale. What is this scale? Well, first of all, before we can talk about what a Phrygian dominant scale is, we first have to say, well, what is a Phrygian? What's the Phrygian mode? Phrygian is three. So if I said C Phrygian, what that means, it's an A flat major scale starting on C. That's called C Phrygian, right? And it has a very distinctive sound starting on C. But that doesn't sound like a dominant scale yet, does it? Now why is that? Well, one way that we make this into a dominant scale is by this. What makes this scale really unique is the flat two, or you can also think of it as a flat nine, and then it jumps right to the major third. That's what really gives this scale its sound. You, know, you hear that in a lot of different uh, music from Middle Eastern music, Indian music, Spanish music, Jewish music. It's a, it's a scale that's used in a lot of different cultures and it's a lot of fun to play. And so we're going to talk about the scale in different ways of thinking about the scale, and then we'll get into some improvisation. The next way we're going to think of this scale is as a Mixolydian scale with a flat 9 and a flat 13. First of all, what is a Mixolydian scale? What's the Mixolydian mode? If I said play C Mixolydian, that means that it's 5 in the key of F. So it's an F major scale starting on C. That would be C Mixolydian, right? So if I said, now play a flat 9, and then play a flat 13, that would be the Phrygian dominant scale. So another way of thinking about it is a C Mixolydian scale with a flat 9 and a flat 13. Again, we're talking about the same scale, same notes, just different way of thinking about it. So let's talk about how to use this Phrygian dominant scale. When, when you hear the term dominant, what does that mean? It means that it's a five chord, right? A five resolving to a one chord. And so we're going to be talking about how to resolve a Phrygian dominant chord using it over a five chord that then resolves to either a major or a minor one. In this case, we're talking about minor because it's often used in minor keys. So let's take a C7, for example, and take this descending scale and then I went back up to the third and then I resolved it to an F minor 9. Let's try that lick together. It's kind of a nice way of using this scale over the 5 chord resolving to a 1. So we have root 7, 13, 5, 4, 3, flat 9, 3, and then 1. Alright, so as you're playing this scale, what gives the scale its quality is the flat 9 to the 3. You can either think of it as an augmented 2nd or a minor 3rd. And that's really the quality of this scale, is this interval here. And then resolving to the 5th with a 1 chord. So that's one way that the scale is used, and probably the most common way the scale is used, is used over a 5 chord. But there is another use for it, and that is as a 1 chord. And so oftentimes, in certain music, especially in, for example, Jewish songs like Hava Nagila, for example, the dominant chord, or a C7, is actually functioning as a one chord, almost like a blues, where you have the one chord and it's dominant. So you have this C7, and then it goes up a half step to D flat, and then back to C7, where C7 is one, right? It feels like that's the one chord. So you can still use this scale, C7 and D flat. It's a really cool way of using the scale 
that's not a five chord, it's just as a one chord. So there's a little piece I made up here using the scale that would go something like this. Try that with me, it's kind of fun, here we go. In the left hand, I'm just going one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, and two, and three, four, one, and two, and three. These are straight eights, but if we were doing this as a swing tune, that rhythm would be called the Charleston rhythm, right? One and two and. But as a straight eighth, it's more one and two and. Oh, one and two and. And the right hand's playing this Phrygian dominant scale. So let's try that together. Ready? One, two, ready, and a oh, one and two and three. One and two and three. One and two and three. One and two and three again. One and two and three. All right, now comes the fun part. We're going to improvise using the Phrygian dominant scale. And I have three improvisational techniques I wanted to talk about. Again, these improv techniques, you can use over five chords that go to a one chord. And you can look for examples of this in songs like Caravan by Duke Ellington using this scale. It resolves to a one chord. So look for these places and songs that have this 5-1 relationship and use the scale. So the first technique we're going to talk about is what's called scale clusters. And all that means is we're going to take part of the scale. In this case, we're taking the root, the flat 9, and the third as a cluster. And we're using that as almost like a little motif. And we're varying the rhythm. And the rhythm goes like this. The right hand would go 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1, 2, 3, 4 and now this is, we're calling this the beginner level because the left hand is only playing a two note voicing and the right hand is playing a simple melody. So we're gonna kind of progressively go beginner, intermediate, advanced as we go through these different techniques. So let's try the right hand together. Uh, one, two, ready, and. One and two and three and four and one, two, three, four and. Great, and then the left hand, you're just gonna be playing so we're leaving out the root, we're playing rootless voicing, and it's a two note voicing with the third and the seventh in the left hand. And then going to the seventh and the third of the F minor nine. And then for the sixth nine, we're just going to lower the seventh to the sixth like that. So together it would sound like this. Two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one, two, three, four and one, two, three, four. Try that with me. Here we go. And feel free to, you know, after you've played through this, if your left hand, if you'd like to add a little bit of rhythm, you could just, for example, do something like this. Add a little rhythm in the left hand if you'd like to. I was kind of doing a bop, 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 bop in my left hand. Let's play with the track now. I'm going to play the first time and then have you try it the second time. Here we go. Great. So the next section is taking that same cluster, but now we're taking a different set of notes. We're taking the fifth, the flat 13th, and the seventh. All right, so we only have, again, the three note shape or cluster. And it's the same rhythm. So we're going one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four and. And the nice thing about this is we're ending on the ninth of the F minor chord really beautiful sound and the left hand again is just playing these shells the third and the seventh and then going to the seventh and the third of F minor and then to the sixth and the third there so it would sound like this two three four I'll play it the first time, you do it the second time.
All right, well done. Our second improv technique is what's called a turn, and this is for the intermediate level. A turn is taking a target note and playing above the note and playing below the note. So you can also think of it as an upper neighbor and a lower neighbor. So we have our target note. In this case, we have a C here. We're going above and then below. That's a turn. So rhythmically, we're gonna go one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, four, and. Like that, and it also creates a little bit of a motif, this ba ba da da ba 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 da da ba 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 da da ba. So it's, it's also creating a type of mo motific development here. So um, let's try this line together slowly. Ready? One and two and three and four and one. Da 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 da. Ba ba da da ba 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 da da ba. Uh, two, uh, one, two, three, four. And the left hand, since this is the intermediate level, we're going instead of just having the third and the seventh, we're also going to add the fifth and the flat nine in the left hand. So it's a C7 flat nine. And then when we go to the F minor 11, because the melody note is the 11th, we have the seven, nine, three, five, and then going to the six, nine, three, five for the F minor six, nine. So altogether, it'll sound like this, three, four, Let's try it with the track now. I'll play it the first time through and then you'll do it the second time. Here we go. Next up, we have another turn. This time we're starting on a lower note and going up high. So we go like this. This one goes one. So again, the turn starts here. Upper neighbor, lower neighbor, up to the top note here, which is the fifth of C7. So we have one. Then one. So let's try the right hand slowly. Three and four and a one and two e and a three four one and two e and a three four and and the left hand is exactly the same as you just played it. So together it'll be this three four one and two e and a three and four and one and two e and a three and four and one two and three and four and try it with me. Here we go. One and two e and a three. All right, now let's play with the track. It's going to be a little bit faster. I'll play it the first time. You try it the second time. Here we go. Yeah, that's a lot of fun, isn't it? And this is a great progression just to use this scale. And you could just have this progression on loop and just play for hours if you want to using the scale. It's so much fun and it's really versatile. So just have a great time playing it. Our third improv technique for the advanced level is what's called triad pairs, which means we're going to take the scale and break it down into some triads. So this first triad you see, and I have it bracketed off there, is an F minor triad descending. And then we go to an E diminished and then to a D flat major and then to a C7 and then going up to the 11th of the F minor 7. And again, this comes from the fact that within the 
Phrygian dominant scale, we have all these different triads, right? That's what makes it sound so, so cool. So we're starting again, F minor, E diminished, D flat, C. Even by itself, it sounds really cool just to play that as blocked chords. So let's try, just try the right hand. By the way, once we get to that third bar there, we're, we have a little comp pattern with the bottom two uh, fingers here with your right hand. So we're going one, two, and three, and four, and. A little bit of a stretch, if you can get that. It's a, just a, a ninth there. So we have one, two, and three, and four, and. That's what's happening there. So let's just try the right hand alone. Here we go. Two, three, four, one, and two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one. Try it again. Go one, and two, and three. left hand, rather than playing in the beginner version, we had just three and seven, and then the intermediate, we had a four note left hand rootless voicing. Now, for the advanced version, we're having you actually play the bass groove, and a typical bass groove in this style, using these, this scale, is one and two and three, four, one and two and three, four, where you're playing the root and the fifth of each of these chords. So it's one and two and three, Left hand only. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Isn't that a fun bass line? So we're going to put them together and kind of slow it down so you can see how it all lines up together. So together it would sound like this slowly. I'll play it through once and have you join me the second time. It goes two, three, four, one. with the track now it's going to be a little faster let's play it through two times i'll play it the first time and then you play it the second time all right here we go Now we have another triad pairing starting with C and we're going the opposite direction. So in the, in the previous example, we started at the top and went down. Now we're starting at the bottom and going up with these triad pairs starting with C major and then to D flat major. Again, the same triad pairings just reversed. E diminished and then F minor. And then we end on that F minor 11 again, and that's the same exact pattern this as we did in the previous example. So the right hand again would be like this, three, four, one, and two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one. Try it with me, one, and two, and three. And again, the left hand's playing that same bass groove. All right, great. So putting it together, I'll play it through once. You join me the second time slowly here. One and two and three and four. One and two. with the track now it's a little bit faster I'll play it the first time you join me the second time
That's great. And you know, the fact that we're playing a bass line and we're playing the scale and we're comping, this is more of a solo piano version of this. When you were playing those rootless voicings, that's the way that you'd play if you were playing with a bass player or with a bass and drummer. Thanks again for being here today for our quick tip on the Phrygian dominant scale. I hope you learned a lot. I know I had fun teaching you. We started off learning about the scale, learning different ways of thinking about the scale, and then we got into some improv techniques from both the beginner, intermediate, and advanced level. I encourage you to go home and to try to use this scale and also to improvise and create your own lines, which is really the goal of this course. So thanks again for being here and hope to see you again real soon. Take care everyone. So long. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed the lesson, be sure to check out pianowithjohnny.com. We have over 1,000 step-by-step lessons for all playing levels where you'll learn your favorite songs, styles, and how to improvise at the piano. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.